So your paper, uh, you need to have it going vertically this direction. And we're going to write some information. You can just write it on here because this will become the back. This is watercolor paper. You'll notice there's more texture to it. It's going to hold up to water a little bit better than the paper we've been using. So you're going to add your name, hour, medium, who knows what the medium is? Watercolor. And the last thing you're going to add is a title. I'm going to show you the reference photo so you can think of a title now. That way you don't have to worry about it later. Sorry, I've got kind of a glare. That's the reference photo. So it's like fall, trees, there's a path. So think of a title, write it down. When you've got all this, turn your paper over. So the blank side's up. The plan is for this to be a one day painting, but my other classes have not gotten through everything. I'm hoping because this class is a little longer, we're good, but we'll see. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So while I'm waiting for people to get this all copied down, I'm gonna kind of explain. So today we're gonna do, I already showed you the picture, like I'm looking at a reference picture and you're just copying what I'm doing for practice. So we're gonna do a watercolor, like an actual painting of something semi-realistic based on an image, okay? The rest of this week, you're gonna do this on your own. I will give you stock, or sorry, I'll give you copyright free images to use as your reference photo but I'm not gonna walk you through them, okay? That's what today is about. Um, you're gonna have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to do three more like little paintings, just this size for the project. So this is practice for the project. Everyone good? I can flip it over? Okay, so here is our paper. It's vertical, double check yours is vertical. Uh, I'm not gonna draw with a pencil, I'm just gonna use my pencil to show you what I'm trying to explain. So if I put my pencil here, halfway-ish, the top part's gonna be sky, bottom part's gonna be ground. So what's this line here called? Someone said it. Yeah, this is the horizon line. So it's that line, it's an imaginary line between sky, ground, okay? So with my large brush, I'm getting a lot of water and I'm getting that regular blue color and I'm going to do in the top half a wash of blue. We want it to be pretty pale. Most of this will get covered up eventually, but we just need this as a background. So with watercolor, you start with really light pale values and you build up your color or your value. So we're starting pretty light. You'll notice your uh, edges and corners of your paper are gonna start kind of curling that's okay. So the blue is probably not showing up great on camera. It's very light. That's what you want. If you're starting to lose bristles of your brush, just leave them on your paper. We'll get them when your paper's dry. So there's my blue. I'm gonna rinse my brush. The bottom half, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm going to use just regular orange. However, I'm not gonna paint right against this blue. Who knows why? Yeah, so they'll start mixing because I'll have wet paint right next to wet paint. And what happens when I mix blue and orange together? Someone said it. What kind of color do I get if I mix two complementary colors together? Brown, and I don't want that right here. So I'm gonna leave a tiny white space. It's a little dark. Um, so that they don't touch, or they don't touch a lot. Because I don't want them mixing right now. I want them to be separate. 
So I'm doing a wash of orange on the bottom. Blue on the top, orange on the bottom. The next thing I'm going to add, and I'm going to show you a picture because it's easier to see than to just explain, um, is this path. We're going to do it in brown. So the path ends kind of where our horizon line is, and it's real skinny, and it kind of curves, but it becomes much wider at the bottom. So that's what we're going to try to replicate. It doesn't have to be perfect. Keep in mind this is practice, okay? So I'm using my large brush still lots of water still and I'm gonna pick a point on the horizon line kind of off to the right Is that showing up okay yes and I'm just gonna have it kind of curve around I'm gonna draw it out so you guys can see just draw it out and paint so kind of like that on this side so now I'll fill it in um, because we just painted that orange, your brown might blend in with your orange a little bit, kind of start bleeding into each other. That's okay. Mine's been sitting a little bit, so it's soaked in, so I'm not getting much of that, but it's okay if it does, because this is just our base layer. will become a path. The next thing I'm going to do, and I'm not really waiting for this to dry, is I'm going to finish this ground area. I'm going to add just regular orange right beside my path. And I want my colors to be a little bit more intense or vibrant, so I'm using less water. And you're going to see they're going to start blending with each other, which is what I want. So a brighter orange now, just right next to the path. And then in these, like, corner type areas. I'm going to switch to yellow orange, which for most of you will be in the bottom left of your palette, right next to yellow green. So I'm going to fill the rest of my ground with that, this yellow orange.
So now what I need to do is let this soak into my paper because we need to add another layer on top, but this next layer, we don't want blending in with this one. We want it to be separate. So I need to be painting dry on dry, or sorry, wet on dry. And my paper's wet, so it needs to dry. So I'm gonna let that soak in. Later this week, when you do your own paintings, you're gonna do three. So instead of sitting here and waiting for your paint to dry, like we're doing today, you would get to this point with your background and then start your second landscape. And then when you get to that point, you start your third. So you'll really be working in layers. So maybe tomorrow you do all your backgrounds, then Thursday, your middle grounds, then Friday, your foregrounds. But for today, we have to let it dry. When you get to the point where there's no water sitting on top, like right now, this corner, I've still got water on top of my paper, so I'm waiting for that to soak in. When you get to that point for today, um, you can kind of like wave your paper. I'm going to do it in a little bit to help it dry faster so we can move on. But don't do that if there's water on top because then your paint will go all over your paper.
so don't throw things away that you shouldn't throw away. A book? You need to get it out. If you don't need it, then leave it on my desk. But you're not throwing books away. paper is to the point where there's not any water staying on top and it's fairly dry so I'm ready for my second layer which is gonna be the trees not the leaves just the trees and like branches if your paper is not dry yet don't start painting because yours won't look like trees it'll just start spreading out everywhere so if you are not ready watch because a lot of this is repetitive because we're gonna do several trees and then when you're ready paper is dry you can start okay so on the left side here and I'm gonna work left to right so I don't smear it because I'm right-handed if you're left-handed you're gonna work on the right side to the left so you don't smear it how many people are left-handed okay a couple of you so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna do like three big trees over here some small ones in the middle and then big trees on this side too. So I'm using my little brush, not much water because I don't want this flooding my paper. And I'm just gonna do lines for now. We'll make them look like trees later. But for right now, I'm just going to do lines. So I'm gonna put one here. If it's crooked, that's okay. If it's wavy, that's okay. Um, keep in mind, we want this to show depth so it looks like it's going back in space. So trees that are lower to the paper should be larger and more clear because they're closer to you. If I want this tree to be further back, it's gotta start up higher. It will eventually be a little bit smaller if it's a smaller tree. And I'll put one here. So this one's even a little further back. So I've got three lines. Those will be trees. Uh, in the center, I'm going to do a few closer to the path. They're gonna be little trees. And they're far away, so they're extra little. So we'll put one there. This one's a little bit further back. It'll be a little higher. I think I'll do five little trees. Kind of following my path. on those later. And then I'm going to do three trees on this side too.
might do a couple more little trees. Okay, so these will be trees. How many of you can't paint yet? Your paper's still too wet. Okay, most people can paint. So trees are pretty easy unless you make them complicated. Don't do that. So you start with a line and then we're gonna make them look more like trees. Keep in mind, trees all look different. So if you mess it up, it's okay, it's just a weird tree. Also, and I'll show you kind of this example, we're gonna be covering up a lot of this with leaves later. So if there's an area or a few areas you don't like, you'll just put more leaves there or darker leaves. So it will be hidden. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the left side so I don't smear. Most of this is dry because I'm not using a ton of water. And I'm gonna start making this very first one look like a tree. Um, so the bottom, the tree trunk area is gonna be wider. I'm also, because in this photo you can see like um, where the roots go down into the ground, I'm gonna kind of do that. So I'm gonna add little root type things and on your tree if you have areas that are like a lighter or a medium brown and areas that are darker that's good because from a distance it will look more three-dimensional because you have a wider range of value so don't try to paint it all in like a coloring book um, so what I'm going to do as I move up the tree I'm gonna add branches which are just lines that go in whatever direction you want them to go. The more directions, the more realistic your tree will be. You wanna try to keep branches getting skinnier. Like if I add onto this one, it should get skinnier and then skinnier because that's the way trees work. But if you mess up and it doesn't turn out that way, it's okay. So I'm just adding lines. Some areas I'll make a little bit darker. Some areas I'll come back and make a little bit thicker. And if you're not happy with the way your tree looks, we've placed these close enough that they're gonna overlap a bunch. Um, so if you don't like an area, you just add more branches or twigs there to hide it. So I'm gonna leave that for now and work on my second one. I'm just going to move on.
So when you get to these little trees here, we're gonna keep them pretty little, but I'm also gonna try to keep them a little bit lighter because they're further away. So they wouldn't have as much detail. They'll seem a little bit fuzzier. But same thing, I'm just adding branches. Most of these will be covered up by leaves. on the right side now. people are done with all of their trees okay um, I don't think we're gonna have time to do the leaves but we'll just do that tomorrow at the beginning of class leaves don't take 
nearly as long as everything else has. So if you're still painting your trees, keep painting your trees. If you are done, just let your paper sit at your table and dry out a little bit and you can go clean out your jar and put your brushes away. But if you're still painting, keep going. 